Hello underwater friends. Today we're going to talk about my favorite pictures we can take underwater. Super macro. Super macro is taking pictures that will have a magnification with a ratio higher than a one to one. So you're going to have your subject bigger than it really is. It's very interesting because you can see things with your camera that you wouldn't be able to see with your own eyes. You have two main options on taking pictures. Number one, to take pictures of very small animals like skeleton shrimp, isopods and things like this that are very small. Or you can also take details from a bigger subject, the eye of a scorpion fish or something like this. We'll first talk about the equipment, then the settings, then we'll talk about the extra equipment and when to choose them. We'll also talk about the shooting techniques and finally the composition. So first let's talk about the equipment. We have two main options. Option number one is to take a compact camera. Sony RX100 is very good. Now they are the seventh generation. Price is very high, but the camera is very, very good. Canon will go with the G7X, now that is Mark III. And if you want, you can also go with Olympus TG6, I guess. Um, all three of those cameras will be very good for super macro. Actually, the TG6 will be even better because it have a microscope option. But I don't like this camera so much because you don't have enough flexibility and you don't, you're not able to do uh, a full manual settings. I really like the Sony Air RX100 or Canon G7X because both of those cameras will offer you the manual mode. And then you can choose your aperture and your speed. Those three bodies will have to have also an underwater housing that have capabilities to have wet lenses. And then we'll put a wet diopter in front of it. Then you have the option to have a mirrorless or a DSLR camera with a macro lens, which can be either a 60 or a 90 to 105, depending on the brand. You can also have a teleconverter that you'll put between your camera and your lens. For the teleconverter, we have two options, 1.4 or 5 or times 2. This will actually double the length of your camera. So if you have a 60 mm macro, it's going to go to 120. And if you have 100, it's going to go to 200. So magnification will be much higher. One of the little problems with this one is that most of the time you're going to lose one f-stop. So the picture will be a little bit darker with the converter than without. Or you can have a diopter that will be a wet lens between the housing and the outside. The diopter, you can find different brands. The one, some of the famous ones are Noticam or AOI that will do very good lenses. You have Sub-C as well. Most of them will have diopters between plus 5 and plus 15. You can also stack them together. If you really want super, super, super macro, then you can put a plus 5 and plus 10 together and end up having a bigger magnification. The problem is that your working distance is going to become even shorter and it's going to be more difficult to take pictures. You will also need a focus light and strobes. I recommend to have two strobes to make it more even and more lit. One of the things you can use as well is a snoot. Snoot can be useful because you really want to focus on one part so if you're able to lit only one part of your subject, one part of your picture, then you can get the rest of the picture to be black. And like this, the contrast will be nicer. One more 
thing that you can have is also a tripod. Personally, when I only take pictures and not video, I never use my tripod, but it can be useful. And the final thing you need is a steady underwater photographer. For the settings, I recommend you to have an ISO as low as possible. Most of the time it's going to be 100. For the speed, I recommend a high speed that will go with the sync of your flash. In my case, I think it's 1 over 200 for the aperture. Um, it depends. You can have a big number aperture, which will make it easier to take the pictures because the depth of field will be a little bit bigger. Or you can decide to have a small f number, like f 5.6 or f 8, and then to decide to have only one sharp point in your picture and the rest blurry to have a nice bokeh. For the autofocus, I normally put it on automatic, but it depends on what you prefer. You can also have manual autofocus, it works very well. It just takes a little bit more time. So if your subject is moving a little bit, it's going to be a little bit more tricky. I always set my focus on continuous and like this, the focus is done every time you need it. But one very important thing, I decide the point where I want my focus to be. So I pick a zone and then I put my focus point on the eye of the animal or on the most important thing. And then like this, the composition is easier to do. For the strobes, if you have the capability to make TTL, it's much better. Like this, you're going to have a well-exposed picture. If you don't have, it's not a problem. You do on manual and you'll just need a few tries to see what is the best lighting. If you have a full frame sensor like I do, you can choose to put your camera on APS-C mode. Like this, the zoom is going to be a little bit more in my case 1.5 and you won't need to crop in post but the picture will have less pixels so it's mainly about you if you want you can crop in post and decide where you want your composition to be or if you really like to have the picture directly from the camera at least on the size and the frame then you can go on APS-C and have an even bigger magnification. For the extra equipment you can put on, you have two main options. Number one, you can put a wet diopter, which is going to go on the outside of your housing and will give you a great magnification. Option number two, you can have a teleconverter. Both of them will have different purpose and will be used in different, in different settings. If you're using a 60 mm macro, most of the time it's very useful to use a teleconverter. The reason is your working distance is already very short. So if you put the diopter in front of it, then the focus distance may be even too short for your shots. So by putting a teleconverter, you're going to keep the same distance from your subject but the magnification will be better. On the other hand, if you're using a 100 mm or 90 mm, depending on the brand, or 105, then because the working distance is already long, then it's very useful to put a wet diopter in front. And like this, you will be able to be closer to your subject and have a very good magnification. The main problem with the teleconverter is that when you put it on your camera, then you don't have any choice. When you're underwater, you cannot take out and put it back. The good thing about the wet diopter is that you can always put it on or take it back using a flip filter. For the shooting technique, number one, it's very important not to break anything. Most of the time, you're going to have to be very low on your subject to have a nice composition so you don't want to damage anything. You have two main options. Option number one, have a very neutral buoyancy and then you can pick where you want to be and stay there when you take your shot. Option number two, you're going to have to lay on the bottom, of course making sure it's only sand and nothing that you can damage underneath. 
and you're gonna stay there and pick your position. When you do this, you really want to have, for example, your elbow in the sand and hold your camera very steady. Try to get close to your animal, which is very important because you want super macro, but try to do it slowly, little by little. Don't get the animal scared. If it's a nudie branch, there's no problem. Nudie branch shouldn't be so scared. But if you're talking about small shrimps or whatever animal that is moving more, then you really want to go there step by step, little by little. Make sure that you don't have big movements also when you want to review your picture, okay? If you move your camera a lot, of course your animal is gonna be scared. Imagine if you had like a building moving in front of you back and forth. Well, I'm sure you would run. Well, same thing for the small animals. We're talking very small things, so the housing plus the straw plus everything is so much bigger than them. So, little by little, take your time, find a nice steady position, don't move, and like this, you're gonna get the best shots possible. When you take your picture, try also to get different strobe position. You can always change the orientation of your strobes. You have to think that the distance between your animal and the camera will be very, very short, especially if you put a wet diopter in front of your housing. So it's very important that you have the light coming in the right position. So don't hesitate to take a couple of pictures, review them, and then decide to change the strobe position. Normally, you shouldn't be affected with backscatter too much. The distance between the animal and the camera is so small that there won't be so much backscatter. And also, the focus point will be only in one place. So normally, the backscatter should be blurry and actually make a bokeh effect and shouldn't be so much of a problem. And finally, the composition. Composition is very important the subject will be so big in the frame that you cannot miss the composition. You want to have a background that is blurry or even water that will become blue or black depending on your settings. But the most important is your subject. So it's important to place the eye or the focus that you want to have in certain places. Most of the time, you want to be very low. So don't take the subject from above because it won't look so nice. You want to go down, like we said previously, as low as possible, and then pick your focus point. In my case, I have a flexible spot that I can use on my camera. So I decide where I want it on my composition. Most of the time, I use the rule of third and try to have my eye in a top corner. So the rule of third will be two lines horizontal and two lines vertical. I try to have my focus in one of the intersections of the lines. For the distance, you will be limited with the capabilities of your camera with the diopter. With the diopter, you'll need to get very close to your subject and the working distance is gonna be very small. So you don't have so much option. With my camera, I can decide to go on APS-C or on full frame mode, which will make already a big difference, but that's pretty much it. The focus will be at the distance my camera can do it. Thanks for watching this video all the way to the end. If you want to see videos from small animals, you can check 10 fun facts skeleton shrimp and if you want to know more about how I do underwater photo, you can check Six Steps Underwater Photography, Part 3, Macro Photography. Thank you, bye bye.